You know, sometimes the exponential function actually appears behind the scenes and we don't even realize it. Let's take a look at an actual example you can imagine happening to you if you win. So, suppose that you win some contest and the people that are running the contest offer you two options for your prize. One option is to receive a $25,000 brand new fancy shiny waxed car. Really great. Now maybe you don't drive yet, but maybe they'll even provide a chauffeur, who knows. Anyway, so there's that prize. And then the other prize is sort of modest. They'll give you a penny. <laughs> they'll give you a penny. And then the next day, they'll give you three times that. So they'll give you three pennies. And then the next day, they'll give you three times that. And so you'll get three times three, nine pennies. And you keep doing that for a month. Which prize do you pick? Shiny car? the one penny. Well, when you first think about it, you're like, whoa, I'm going for the car. But let's actually do the math and see what's really going on here. The answer may be surprising. So let's make a little chart where we have the various days and the amount that we'd get. So the first day, with this penny option, we get one penny. The next day, we get three pennies. And on the third day, we'd get another three times what we've previously got, which would be nine pennies. Okay, now, do we see a pattern? Well, let's think about it. I notice that each time I'm multiplying by three. So I can actually write this number as three to the zero power, which if I want to write that sort of in sympathy with the fact that we're at day one, I could write this as three to the one minus one. Okay, what about three? Well, the number three I could write as three to the first. And how could I express that in terms of day two in the exponent? Well, two minus one as an exponent. And I'm beginning to see a pattern. Does that hold in three? Well, I could write day three's profit as three squared, which in terms of day three is three to the three minus one exponent. And now I definitely see a pattern. And while I can't say for sure the exact amount that I would get on the nth day, a generic day, I can write the exponential expression for it as just 3 to the n minus 1 exponent. All right. Well, now our mission is clear. What we want to do is we want to see for what value of n will this value exceed the value of the car. Well, how can I do that? Well, the value of the car is $25,000. On day n, I'm getting 3 to the n minus 1 cents. So the first thing I've got to do is correctly figure out how many cents there are in the value of that car. Well, that's pretty easy to do because we know that 100 cents make up $1. And so what I see here is that $25,000 is the same thing as two and a half million cents. That's a lot of cents. Or in scientific notation, 2.5 uh, times 10 to the 6. All right, so our mission now, I think, is clear. What we want to know is what is the value for n so that this amount exceeds or is greater than or equal to that amount? That's the question. So let's write that down. So our question now is to determine when 3 to the n minus 1 exponent exceeds or is greater than 2.5 times 10 to the 6 power. Well, there's an inequality that we want to solve. And the problem is that the, the unknown is in the exponent. So I immediately will take logs of both sides. And what I see now is log of 3 to the n minus 1 is greater than log of 2.5 times 10 to the 6. And now I can use the wonderful property about logs, which tell me that if I have log of something to a power, that exponent here comes out as a coefficient in front. That's the power of taking logs. So when I do that, I see, and I'm going to make a mistake now, see if you can figure out the mistake I'm making. I see n minus 1, there's the exponent, in front of the log 3, greater than log 
2.5 times 10 to the 6. Do you see the mistake I made? Well, what I do here, I want to multiply this entire exponent by log 3. But I'm not doing that. The way it's written, really what I'm saying is that that 1 is being multiplied by log 3, but nothing else is. To really make sure I multiply everything through by that log 3, I need to put parentheses around here. This is really important. If you were stumped by this, then what you should do is make a note, write it down in your notebook, and say, got to remember, clump all that together with parentheses. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to solve this for n. There are a lot of ways of doing this. I can divide both sides by log 3 first, just to get rid of the log 3. Now, it's an inequality. So we have to be careful, because if we divide or multiply both sides by a negative number, the, the sign, of course, is going to move in the other direction. So is that a problem here? Well, no. If you try, type in log 3 on a calculator, you'd actually see that that value is positive. So we can divide through without worry of the sign. So if I divide through, I'd see n minus 1 is greater than log of 2.5 times 10 to the 6, all divided by log of 3. And now if I just add 1 to both sides, I see that n has to exceed log 2.5 times 10 to the 6, all divided by log 3, plus the number 1. Now, using a calculator, we can actually estimate what this is. And we'd see 14.41 days. That's how many days. Now, I'm asked, the question is, uh, how many days would we, on what day would we receive more than the value of the car? So the day has to be bigger than the 14th day. And so therefore, it's the 15th day. So that means that on the 15th day of the, of the prize, where you get a penny and then triple the previous thing, previous day, on the 15th day, you're actually going to exceed, as your income for that day, more than the value of the $25,000 car. Absolutely surprising. By just starting with a penny and using exponential growth, it turns out in 15 days, the value you get on that day far exceeds $25,000. So do you pick a $25,000 shiny automobile, or do you pick a penny? The answer, found by exponential functions and logarithms, is pick the penny.